Welcome, my friends, to a Dungeons and Dragons tale. This one I've entitled The Bard and the Spectre. Our journey begins as the party cross into a cold, desolate, rain-washed marsh, heading north towards the mountains. As they cross the wet, soggy soil, in the distance the party notices a body lying behind a bush. They rush forward, and as they draw closer, they recognise the corpse. An NPC they met only that morning, who had gone ahead of them. He lies curled, stained in blood and twitching in agony. Much to my surprise, as the Dungeon Master, the Bard is the first to rush forward. When I planned this encounter, I was expecting someone with a few more hit points, or a chance to fight a monster. But Bard got there first. He rolls the body over, and looks into the eyes of this person they once spoke to, not that long ago. Black pits into the void. There's nothing there, no light. Not mere holes in the head, but mere holes in reality. Straight through into nothingness. The bard is paralysed and blinded. His vision fades to nothing. And the darkness that consumes the eyes of the body starts to consume his. At this moment the party is jumped. A terrifying undead ogre bursting from behind a tree along with a score of others, other lesser zombies. They clash in battle. Their concern for the bard is quickly disappears, vanishes, as they fight for their lives. But the bard wakes, somewhere, can't tell where. Even with his dark vision, things are just black all around him. He feels as if he's in a cave but he has no way to be sure. And so he looks into the darkness. And what does he see? But a strange purple light rushing towards him. A spectre. It clashes into him, flailing with its claws, desperate to extract his vengeance upon the living. But somehow, the bard, with flute in hand, beats back the monster. He turns to flee, to break, to disengage, to run. But he can't get that far. The spectre is too quick, and is upon him again in the next round of combat. There it does strike him, taking off more than half his health. A devastating blow. And for those of you who don't know, spectres have a chance to reduce your maximum hit point count which could be quite nasty. Realising this, and realising he has no chance to do enough damage to injure the spectre, because he wasn't supposed to fight it in the first place, the bard resorts to cunning and ingenuity, or at least the player does. The bard himself resorts to screaming, shouting, and singing, effectively. He calls upon his powers of thaumaturgy, or however it's pronounced, I'm not entirely sure, but we'll just go with that. He brings up his voice and bellows with all his might. Be gone! He yells. To which the party jokingly adds, Be gone! Thought! I tell the bar to roll intimidation, because that's what he was trying to do scare the monster off. He rolls. He rolls a 20. As a DM, you're a bit stuck at this point as to what to do. I thought, sod it, it's always more fun when the DM just says yes, and rolls with what happens. The spectre panics, ah! and it zooms off, but it recovers quickly. It circles for a turn, the bard has bought himself time, but he has nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. He is alone with this monster, but he has bought himself time, and time the living party use well on the mortal real world where they continue to fight the monsters that attack them. The cleric 
shows his religious icon and rolls ridiculously well at scaring off more than half of the zombies. Unfortunately, not the ogre, who the fighter is in a one-on-one -on -one fight with and is somehow, with lots of healing spells and a barrage of magic from the wizard, slowly getting his way towards winning, or at least at least not dying, but they're a long way off. As the spectre attacks again, the bard knows he doesn't have much chance. But his life is low. Pause for dramatic effect. I might go... Wait, wait, wait. Pause for dramatic effect. A back and forth begins between the bard and the spectre. As one tries to intimidate the other. And the other tries to murder the bard. The bard resorts to shouting, intimidating, and even trying to persuade, yes, persuade, because he has good persuasion skill, the spectre not to kill him, and continues to roll very well, and the spectre continues to miss, which annoyed me greatly at this point, but I had to roll with it because I'd started the trend. They fight back and forth, the bard never raising a weapon, somehow never getting hurt, and constantly confusing the spectre, so I kept giving the uh, spectre disadvantages or you know, reducing its uh, to hit modifiers just to feel like the bard is actually achieving something. But he's only going to be saved by the party winning the fight, which they're, like I say, slowly doing. The bard finishes his dance with death by playing dead. He says to me, I would like to play dead. I said, okay, give me performance. He rolls. He rolls another natural 20. The spectre is convinced. You look pretty dead to the spectre. Somehow it can't tell the difference and starts to loot your pockets. And before long, the party win the fight. And the bard is drawn back into the material plane, viewing a glimpse into the future of the party, but one they haven't picked up on yet. Not in the first session, at any rate. This, to me, was a very, very interesting turn of events. It's not what I expected. <laughs> it's not the right person who ended up in the fight. But I think it's shown to all DMs, or Game Masters, or whatever you want to be called, that if you do end up with someone who shouldn't be able to win a fight, in a position where they're probably going to lose. If you let the player try it out, think sideways, rush about, roll all the dice and get a bit lucky. There was a lot of luck involved in this. But just by saying yes, go for it. All the party had a really good time. And I had a very fun time watching this ridiculous charade. I'm sure it's harder to come across as how hilarious this story was uh, post the event. But being there and imagining this tiefling rushing about and just desperately worming his way out of a situation was great for everyone involved. And it meant the player didn't die, which is also good. So next time, you as a dungeon master, or as a player, get into a situation where you probably can't win, just remember this tale, and how a bard wormed his way out of a fight in the tale of the Bard and the Spectre. Thanks for watching.